Welcome to the character creation tutorial for Wonder Studio. In this video, we will go over the inner workings of the AI mocap and explain what to pay attention to when designing your character. A character's proportions play a big role and understanding how to account for them is important to getting the best results. At the heart of Wonder Studio is an actor's performance. This means that characters with human-like proportions will have an advantage when it comes to performance transfer. This, however, doesn't mean that characters that deviate from human form cannot achieve good results. But it is important to understand what the limitations of the system are. We can split a human-like character's body into several groups. Arms, legs, torso and head. The head group has only two joints for consideration, neck and head joints. Both joints should be placed naturally at the base of the neck and the head. When creating stylized or non-human characters, the neck and head size can vary drastically and can deviate a lot from the human form. In these cases, it is important to remember that the performance of an actor should take these differences into account. For example, if the character has a head four times larger than a typical human head, if they wish to perform an action of scratching their nose, actors should not scratch their nose directly. Instead, they should have some kind of measure of where the character's nose would be, as if they are inhabiting the character or if they are inside of a costume. The volume that the character's head occupies is of importance for framing as well. For example, while shooting a close-up shot of the actor who will be replaced by character with a taller head, it is important to leave some room above the actor's head. Following a similar logic, arm and leg joint placement is also very intuitive. Arms and legs have three main joints, for arms, there are the shoulder, elbow and wrist joints. For legs, there are the hip, knee and ankle joints. An additional joint for the leg would be the toe base joint, which is the joint responsible for the rotation of all toes simultaneously. As for the arms, additional joints would be the finger joints. Each finger would have three joints, root, middle and tip joints. Geometry shape and bone lengths of the character's appendages can vary drastically from the human form, which can have a visual impact on the performance transfer. Be mindful that appendage thickness or volume can cause intersections with other parts of the character's body if the disparity between the actor and the character is large, and this is not accounted for in the actor's performance. Regarding the bone length, the character's legs and arms can either be shorter or longer than the actor's arms, but implications for this can be different, so let's examine them separately. Shorter arms can fail to reach the desired place, which is especially important when the actor is trying to interact with objects. In a similar fashion, longer or shorter legs can cause the actor's motion to be exaggerated on a character. This mismatch can cause the foot sliding issue as the character is moving through space at a different rate than the stepping motion. Wonder Studio gives you the ability to enable inverse kinematics for feet and wrists separately. This can be done in the live action advanced project type. If enabled, inverse kinematics will attempt to bring the wrists and feet positions of the character closer in line with the actor's wrist and feet positions. However, this option should be used with caution, as it can result in unnatural stretching if the actor's limbs and body proportions are vastly different than those of the character. The torso is comprised of the hips or pelvis bone, three spine bones and left and right clavicle bone. The hips or pelvis bone is the character's main bone. It is responsible for translating, rotating and scaling the entire character. It transfers this global orientation of the character to the left and right legs through the hip bone and to the upper torso through the first spine bone. There are a total of three spine bones. The first spine bone is responsible for deforming the lower torso. The third bone is the one responsible for driving the ribcage area and as such it serves as a base for the neck and clavicle bones. The second spine bone is an in-between bone and serves to add additional rotation and smoothness to the deformation of the torso. It is important to distribute these bones as close to the example character as possible, since deviations in bone distribution could lead to small offsets in the animation. It is okay for a character to have more bones than this, but it is important to choose the spine bones which most closely resemble the required distribution for best results. For example, if the character has 10 spine bones, picking the first three bones would result in an exaggerated deformation of the lower part of the torso. 
As a result, the shoulders and head position would not match the actor's performance. Although not ideal from the rigging standpoint, the system expects the clavicle bone to be positioned roughly in between the middle of the character and the shoulder bone, and slightly below the shoulder bone. This positioning will produce the best results when deforming the shoulder. Positioning the clavicle bone too close to the spine or above the shoulder line can produce the effect of slanted shoulders. Geometry in the torso section can vary widely. Some of the things to look out for are the shoulders hips ratio and the waist hips ratio. If the shoulders hips ratio is too exaggerated, it may lead to unwanted geometry intersections unless accounted for in the actor's performance. The same is true for the waist hips ratio. That is pretty much it. This has been a short tutorial in which we've shown a couple of recommendations for posing your character properly for Wonder Studio. If you have any questions regarding this subject, you can ask them in comments here or in our Discord channel. Thank you very much and enjoy. Goodbye.